So hi, Micro Puncture here. Well, look at this uh, small microscope. Uh, this uh, is uh, able to magnify a total of 1,000 times. Um, 40 times uh, 25 is 1,000 times. Um, and uh, my microscope here, um, on the side over here, is able to magnify a maximum of uh, 600 times. So the question is now, which one's better? The one that's able to magnify 1,000 times or the one that's able to magnify 600 times, which is uh, significantly less? And the answer is, well, it depends. <laughs> it depends on many other factors uh, besides magnification, of course. Um, so in this video, what I want to talk about is, is I want to talk about, I don't know, I've got here on my cheat sheet, what 14 or 15 different uh, points um, of uh, features um, of microscopes uh, besides magnification um, that uh, might uh, be relevant when making a, a purchasing or buying decision. Um, why am I making this video? Because some time ago in my other YouTube channel, I made a, I made a video um, uh, that uh, uh, where I was complaining that some companies are advertising their microscopes with an unrealistically high magnification and said forget about the magnification I mean there are other important things and then one of my viewers actually correctly said well okay what are these other important things then okay um, yeah so that's uh, what I want to talk about today um, so uh, when you buy a microscope or think about buying a microscope what are some of the other things uh, that you might want to look at um, so I'm going to uh, go through this uh, list uh, here fairly quickly um, because otherwise it's going to take too long um, and uh, I'm not saying that uh, necessarily some of them are important and others are not important sometimes it really doesn't matter sometimes it's a question of taste um, yeah but in every case or in almost every case I want to give you my opinion a little bit uh, so that you see at least the, the, why I made a certain decision uh, no specific order here um, and I'm just going to go through with the first one microscopes are different um, in the number of objectives that you can connect so for example my Olympus um, um, microscope here um, is, can connect five objectives uh, beginning introductory and children's microscopes um, sometimes uh, allow you to connect uh, three objectives um, sometimes even more advanced microscopes allow you to connect three objectives then mid-range microscopes these days I've got one over here okay um, allow you to connect four objectives um, yeah and then a very 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 expensive research microscopes even go up uh, to six objectives yeah, so that is uh, one uh, difference. Uh, my advice would be try to get a microscope with at least four um, objectives. Um, then uh, you can uh, cover a very, very wide range of different uh, magnifications. But I mean, three objectives is uh, also was once the standard as well. So. The second one, uh, forward or backwards facing um, objectives or the, the orientation of the nose piece. Um, so in basically the following issue, uh, if you look here, in my case, you see that when I'm sitting here in front of the objectives that are not used are pointing away from me. And this gives me more space here in front uh, um, on the stage to manipulate the specimen slide. Um, so over here, we've got another one. Yeah, this one here, um, all the same thing. The person is sitting here, okay. Um, and uh, you see that the objectives here are po pointing away uh, from the person. Um, and this means that they're here in front, there is a large uh, space uh, where it can actually uh, then manipulate the specimen and it's easier to yeah, move it around the specimen. And in contrast, I do have the small microscope here as well. Here you can see that uh, the objectives are facing um, forwards uh, towards uh, the macroscopist unless you want to turn this around here of course um, now yeah I think that's one of the least important <laughs> characteristics of microscopes but uh, the advantage of forward-facing objectives is, is they're more accessible if you want to exchange them if you want to do that frequently that is okay yeah but basically even uh, my other um, Olympus microscope uh, my slightly older model it also has forward-facing um, objectives so you find all sorts of uh, models around here so next point um, which type of lamp, uh, LED or halogen? Um, in the former days, halogen was the standard uh, and uh, nowadays LEDs uh, are becoming more and more popular. Um, also one of the reasons uh, because uh, LEDs are becoming more and more powerful um, and uh, that's why uh, more and more um, also uh, research microscopes and also advanced microscopes are now being offered with uh, LEDs. Um, there are still halogen uh, microscopes manufactured and, and sold in the 
the reason is is that uh, some people that who were trained, especially doctors who were trained um, with the halogen microscopes, uh, because the colors of stained specimens are a little bit different in halogen and in LED, this has to do something with the color spectrum of the lamp. Um, for this reason, they're still selling um, uh, microscopes with a halogen bulb. But uh, in I would also my microscope here has halogen. Um, but my recommendation is is that nowadays probably LED is the more modern standard, uh, not standard, but the more modern uh, technology. Um, it uses less electricity and it has the advantage in photography that when you change the light intensity, then the LED does not change the light temperature or the light color. Okay, with halogen, this is an issue. Um, but it's also not a, I would say, not a big difference, but also because the LEDs are colder, they don't generate as much heat. Um, that's also another advantage. And this also means that the specimen does not evaporate as quite as fast when you're using LEDs compared to halogens. Yeah, um, but I would say to a certain extent, also a question of personal preference. Um, mine has halogen, um, but I probably would uh, go towards LEDs these days. Um, another important difference, the next one is, is uh, batteries that are now uh, microscopes that are battery operated. Um, because um, LEDs these days, uh, they do not uh, consume a lot of uh, electricity. It is possible to construct microscopes now that are battery operated. So in the bottom, I mean, especially very common in children's and introductory microscopes, okay? And then when you open it up, then you can actually see that there is a, yeah, a, a battery compartment there. And uh, this has the advantage, of course, for portability if you want to use the microscope um, out in the field. Um, or it can also have an advantage if you're using it in the classroom, for example, in education in school. And uh, then uh, not every, uh, maybe not every table has its own power supply um, or then, yeah, a power socket, that is. And in this case, you might uh, need batteries so that the students are able to actually use the microscope. Yeah, and then uh, there is uh, the question of the power supply. There are these uh, external power uh, power adapters uh, that uh, reduce the voltage. And then the second possibility is is. Uh, to actually have uh, an internal transformer and um, built in into the microscope, which then reduces the voltage. Both uh, systems are possible. So next one, um, also something that not every microscope has, uh, but is nice to have every now and then, is a so-called a focus lock. And this basically, but when you use the focus lock, then this blocks the, yeah, the highest uh, position of the stage. So that means you put everything into focus um, and then you put the focus lock lever around. You can lower the stage, can yeah and then if you put in a new specimen you simply rotate it up to the maximum level that's possible because it remembers the maximum uh, position and then you can continue microscopy and you don't have to refocus everything so I would say for focus lock very convenient uh, for uh, a lot of uh, routine uh, microscopic work uh, most uh, mid-range microscopes don't have that um, but I'm just mentioning what else you can get so next one is uh, the type of microscope head uh, monocular binocular or trinocular. So binocular is, is yeah, if, there, if you have got two eyepieces here, okay, um, and trinocular is, is uh, if you have also a third uh, folded tube here. So this is a trinocular microscope. Um, if you are interested in um, photography at all, then I highly recommend that you get yourself a trinocular microscope. Yes, it is possible to connect the camera directly um, instead of the eyepieces here, but it's simply more convenient um, if you actually uh, are able to connect the camera on top here, okay? And monocular microscopes uh, reduce uh, the weight uh, and the size and of course also the cost. Yeah. And for children, sometimes they uh, like monocular microscopes more because uh, they will look uh, um, anyway only with one eye. Even with a binocular microscope, they might actually have problems and they're still going to close one of their eyes um, because uh, otherwise they get a double image because they're not yet trained enough to use binocular microscopes. Yeah, next one. Um, size and weight, uh, yeah, small to very large. And uh, what's better um, for photography, the larger and the heavier, the better. Um, I like large, heavy uh, microscopes also because uh, yeah, they're a little bit higher and I can sit more upright um, and uh, they're less flimsy in that sense. But uh, that is an advantage under one condition and under a different condition that can be seen as a big disadvantage. Uh, you need a separate space uh, where you can put your microscope and then the microscope will not move away from the table but uh, sometimes you are limited in space and then you need portability, of course, and then in this case, uh, you want to buy yourself a microscope that is slightly uh, yeah, less large and heavy. 
The next one is a little bit more complex. Uh, it refers uh, to the standards of the optics here. Um, it's, so the one yeah, there is the so-called the DIN 160 millimeter standard, and then there are so-called infinity microscopes. And you know that you've got an infinity microscope if there's this infinity sign um, written on the microscope. You have to understand that the objectives are not interchangeable. Okay, um, so if you've got an infinity microscope, you cannot put the 160 millimeter objectives on them and vice versa, and you can also the infinity microscope objectives from different manufacturers are also not uh, interchangeable. So that is uh, the, the thing. Uh, for example, uh, here, however, with 160, that's 160. Yeah, I can simply take out the objective here and put it on here and vice versa, and that would work. Okay, um, that's a standard. Uh, but uh, so the question is now, what's better, so to say? Well, um, I would say that um, infinity per se does not give you any advantages. Um, however, the, uh, if you've got microscopes that have certain features that you want, more advanced features, then the chances are pretty good that they also have infinity optics. Uh, but uh, I would only buy myself an infinity microscope if there are other features on this microscope that I would like to have. But on its own, it, I don't see any uh, any advantages here. Yeah. So generally, if you're interested in amateur microscopy and if you want to get started, um, chances are pretty good that uh, alone, just looking at the price, um, you're probably going to end up with a microscope that has the 160 millimeter DIN standard. So next uh, question is, is which type of illumination system, Köhler or not Köhler. Köhler illumination can be found on the slightly more advanced microscopes and I would say if photography through the microscope is something that you seriously want to do besides observation, I think Köhler is pretty good to have. Um, I would say it's not absolutely necessary, but uh, that is, uh, is something that I would go for. Köhler illumination has two main advantages. Number one, it gives a much more even illumination. Um, and number two, um, it uh, allows you, because there's a diaphragm, it allows you to restrict the light only to the part of the specimen that you're actually looking at. Why is this important? Because this way glare and stray light is reduced and the picture that you make will be of a higher contrast. Um, if you don't have curly illumination, then um, you can use Photoshop and an image editing program to correct uh, for this lack or slightly lower, I wouldn't say lack, but slightly lower um, uh, contrast uh, because of glare. You can reduce that um, or improve on that. Uh, but uh, I would say that uh, for anyone who's really serious about photography um, or video, I would say uh, investing something in curler is um, an advantage. Uh, this significantly drives up the price of the microscope not because Köhler alone is so expensive but generally because they are found in slightly more advanced microscopes and often also microscopes that have infinity optics and are larger and so on um, and this generally drives and pushes up the price yeah but Köhler nice to have uh, but for visual observation you might not always see a difference that's also something I wanted to mention Next point, the type of um, objective. Uh, which objective do you want uh, to have connected in? Well, if you buy yourself a microscope, um, almost out of the box, so to say, you will not have a big of a choice anyway. They will have uh, connected so-called achromatic objectives. These are standard routine objectives that are pretty good these days already, um, but uh, they are not quite as clear and sharp as the more expensive fluoride objectives or apochromatic objectives. So, um, should you get go, go for these objectives for the slightly better ones? Well, if you just check the price tag, I think it will answer itself uh, because uh, those objectives, one of them, can be several hundred US dollars or euros already, uh, so can be more expensive than the rest of the microscope even, um, depending on how specific it is um, and how much the objective magnifies and the numerical aperture, so it can be very expensive, uh, those things. So, um, But um, also, if you, um, you often don't have the choice anyway because when you buy a microscope out of the box, uh, it will simply come with achromatic objectives anyway and there is not much option for you anyway to change them around um, unless you want to buy used objectives and then upgrade your own microscope or unless you want to talk to a more well-known manufacturer then they can provide you with uh, specific specialized objectives but then of course uh, you need a thick wallet um, as well. But generally I would say for the beginner or for the, uh, yeah, it's probably not important and not relevant. Uh, if you want to have something better you can always upgrade later. Next one, uh, the brand of the microscope. Uh, often I get emails, is this a good brand or is it a bad brand? And I will tell you the following, well most uh, brand, uh, uh, most microscopes these days are manufactured in China anyway, uh, most mid-range microscopes and then they're rebranded and they simply put on a different uh, 
brand label, the importer does this. And that's one of the reasons why you find many microscopes that are actually very similar or identical looking sold under different brand names. Because as a matter of fact, it is the same microscope. Um, but uh, this basically means that the, person, the, the company that imports the microscopes, they will do a quality check um, of the microscope and uh, they will make sure that the quality is sufficiently good that they basically can sell it then uh, to the customers. Um, and this basically means that uh, even under certain brands, they have microscopes from all different qualities. So uh, yeah, very um, cheap ones and also very good ones and even going all the way up to research quality and beyond so you cannot really uh, say that one specific brand is better than another brand because uh, it depends on the individual microscope model um, as well so however there are a couple of microscope brands that are a little bit more advanced yeah I wouldn't say more advanced more expensive than others Olympus Nikon Zeiss and Leica the, the traditional companies the big four uh, no specific order here um, and they are manufacturing a lot for research purposes in recent years I've seen that also the company Euromex um, European company is also um, is also going into this direction so the next uh, difference is is the field number of the eyepiece um, yeah the field number if you take out an eyepiece is in millimeters the diameter um, of uh, the aperture of the opening the outside diameter is 23 millimeters in most cases but if you look inside um, sometimes the lens diameter is actually much smaller and the larger the the field number of course the more the bigger the circle so we'll say that you see and the better it is um, standard uh, microscopes come with uh, field numbers of around 18 sometimes it's printed on the um, sometimes it's printed on the uh, yeah on the eyepiece um, itself um, sometimes not and if, if it's not printed on there all you have to do is you take gotta take a rule and you have to measure out the inside diameter here um, yeah, so basically the larger, the better, very good research microscopes, expensive ones have field numbers of uh, 25, 26 even. And that means uh, the, the, di the, the eyepiece diameter is also much uh, bigger than, than this here because you know, this one only has uh, 23 and if you have an eyepiece of, <laughs> of a field number of 25, I mean then the eyepiece itself has to have already a much bigger diameter. So yeah, another thing uh, that I'm uh, thinking about here is the resale value. Uh, this ties in a little bit with the brand, especially if you want, uh, if you consider about uh, uh, buying and selling microscopes and also going into the used microscope sector, then resale value might be an important thing. And uh, for microscopes that have a high resale value, these are very often microscopes uh, of uh, the more expensive brands. Uh, yeah, they want the big four that I, for example, mentioned. Um, so this is also something that you might uh, consider. And the last, or and next one would be also the available support. Um, often when you buy a microscope from from a, yeah from a retailer, um, it depends on the retailer to what extent they're willing to uh, or able to give you support. And with support, I also mean, uh, for example, ma microscope maintenance in case you need to get it cleaned or fixed. And here it is uh, like this that uh, that's one of the reasons why research organizations like to buy microscopes from the big four um, companies is is because they have a network of uh, a service network installed in many countries um, where you actually can call them up and then the company or the university calls them up and you have someone coming who fixes the microscope or who uh, services the microscope um, and this is actually something that uh, many amateurs don't need um, and this is also one of the reasons why uh, generally you don't need a lot of support for the low-cost microscopes because um, you know, even the support hour a service hour would cost more than the whole microscope sometimes yeah so uh, for this reason um, the service and support is especially important important for, um, for slightly more advanced uh, um, microscopes, but also I've seen now that there are more and more companies now, also these days, uh, who are offering um, also support uh, to mid-range mid microscopes because of course uh, the consumers, they might need help every now and then. Yeah, I think uh, that is uh, pretty much uh, all I wanted to say now. Uh, it was a quick run through through the different uh, additional features uh, that microscopes uh, can have. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not saying that uh, some of them are more important than others. Sometimes it's completely irrelevant. Uh, sometimes it's a question of taste. Um, but many of these features are maybe not explicitly mentioned in the specifications. When you uh, go online and check the microscopes, we might, you might actually have to look at the picture of a microscope to actually see which features it has. Um, and uh, if uh, you have a question, then now you're uh, able to hopefully um, ask uh, to, the, uh, to the company that sells you the microscopes, maybe you're able to ask uh, more, uh, more detailed and, and directed questions. And I hope that in this sense, the video helped you a little bit here. That's it, people. I wish you all the best. 
please check out the links uh, below that I have. Happy micro hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye bye.